Dave Anderson here with the Fisherman Magazine. It's March 9th. These are your headlines. Massachusetts officials went crazy with the stocking trucks over the last two days. They stocked 23 ponds between Plymouth and the Cape. Not to be outdone, Connecticut stocked 20 ponds over the last two days and 30 plus over the last week. In addition to that, we're hearing about herring showing up throughout much of southern New England, which is firing up the largemouth bass and firing up the holdover striped bass. Stay tuned for all that and more on this week's New England Fishing Forecast. The Fishing News is sponsored by these fine partners. So before we begin, I just got a couple of news items for you guys. The first one is a second reminder um, about my little mistake in the magazine. Um, the Plum Island Surfcasters 25th Annual Fishing Show is going to be on March 18th, not the 19th as I printed in the magazine. So it's Saturday the 18th, runs from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. They've got seminars, they've got uh, industry representatives, they've got tackle manufacturers, they've got tackle shops. Uh, it's a great day if you're a, especially if you're a striper fisherman, especially if you're a surf fisherman, but really if you just like fishing, it's, it's, done, it's definitely something you don't want to miss. So check that out, and once again, that's the 18th, not the 19th, and it runs from 8 a.m. to 2 p.m. It's at Hope Church on Hale Street in Newburyport, Massachusetts. Uh, also this weekend, we will... This weekend, I should say, we have the Risa Show coming up. Uh, we will be there at booth 827. We will be signing up people for new subscriptions. We'll be renewing your subscriptions. We have amazing giveaways this year. We have BKK hooks, including the Lone Diablos, which I really like. Um, we have the, the nice grubs from Fish Bites. We have a few other things on the table as well, some, some different kinds of hooks and things like that. So you can walk away with a pretty good handful of stuff. Um, for your $30 subscription. And as I've said in past videos, those Lone Diablos, you know, those BKK hooks, really all of them are between $10 and $14 a pack. So you're cutting your subscription almost in half just by taking the hooks. Never mind when you get those fish bites as well, which is another $6 or $7 at the tackle shop. So, it's, you know, it cuts your subscription cost in half easily. Um, it's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. I say that all the time, and it's definitely the truth. Uh, another thing we've got going on at the Risa Show this weekend is we're doing another giveaway promo with Yozuri. If you go to any one of these uh, tackle shops, I'm going to put that up on the screen here for you guys. Um, go to their booth at the show, buy three Yozuri lures, try to say that five times fast, excluding squid jigs though. So it has to be an actual, you know, like a mag darter or a mag minnow or something like that. Uh, you get three of those, you bring us the receipt, and we will give you either a free spool of 40-pound top knot fluorocarbon, or we'll give you a uh, LC Hydro Minnow in the New England Classic color chicken scratch. I uh, can't beat that with a stick. That's, you know, that's four for the price of three. Um, so we're looking forward to seeing you guys over there, and, um, you know, hoping to see you this weekend. I'll be there all three days, so come over and say hello for sure. Uh, last thing, of course, is the giveaway, which is ongoing. This one started last week, and it's going to end on May 17th. It just feels good to say May 17th. Um, and actually, May 17th, if you're interested, is the earliest I've ever broken 40 pounds on the surf. So, also something to keep on your radar. Um, but we, uh, I decided I'm going to give away mini dar a mini darter. I uh, just started working on designing a mini darter, and um, might, as well, might as well get one out there. So, uh, we'll give one of those away to the winner. And uh, maybe we'll do a second place one this time around, too. i got a little pile of stuff I can give away here. So uh, you guys know the drill by now. Picture's got to show you and your fish. It's got to be a recent catch. And it's got to be either emailed to me at danderson at thefisherman.com or texted to the number on the screen. If you do choose to email it, just make sure you put giveaway or contest or something like that in the uh, subject line of the email. So it makes it easy for me to sort them out and find them later. Uh, I'll be looking forward to seeing what you guys get. And... Uh, even looking more forward to giving away something cool. So send those in to me and uh, you know, we'll see who wins. Now moving down into Massachusetts, um, we're going to start things off on the North Shore with Mr. James Jukes. Just out checking some water again, a few spots. And uh, the wind's blowing out of the north a little bit here. Got a little bit of sunset going on. Uh, anyways, the 
fishing over the weekend from what I got from a bunch of people was it was very good yeah uh, I took a skunk but what are you gonna do it happens uh, a lot of guys were up farther north still catching fish in the ice uh, up on Winnie they still got ice um, up into Maine it's pretty good too so if you want to take that drive get out there other than that you're going to do some open water fishing down here uh, the holdover guys tight lip but they were getting them oh i talked to a few they were they were finding some fish um, that snowstorm didn't slow anything down so that's good uh, everything else up here north of boston has uh produced if you're out uh, small mouth large mouth uh, I'm just happen to be here checking out his uh, carp area. Um, but the panfish, the yellow perch, the pickerel, um, you name it, guys were getting into them. Uh, the transitions in between the start of the storm and the finishing up of the storm uh, was producing. And uh, I'm off to go do some show prep for the Plum Island Surfcasters show. Hope uh, everyone can get out to that show. It's on March 18th, 8 to 2. Um, I'll be down at Rissa this weekend too. If I run into anybody, make sure you say hi. All right, Dave, that's about it from here. We're getting closer to good weather. Now things are really starting to wake up now. It's just that time of the year. And if you ask me, we're two, at least two weeks ahead of schedule uh, over a typical year. So, you know, we're in the first week of March here, and or the first full week of March, I should say. And I would typically expect this to happen, you know, the, the fishing the way it is to be more like around the 15th or so. So we're, uh, or even the 20th. So we're in, we're in a good place right now, um, as far as, especially as far as largemouth bass fishing goes. I was talking to Pete Belson over at Belson Bait and Tackle in uh, Situate the other day, and uh, you know he was saying the same thing. He's like, man, anyone who likes to fish for largemouth should be doing it right now. He's like, this is the best time of year to get a really big one. I 100% agree. You know, these fish are coming out of a lean winter. Even a warm winter like this is, a, is lean feeding for these fish. And uh, they really strap on the feed bag now. Then you've got these two things that are happening at this time of the year that really start to get them excited. One, you got trout stocking, which we've already said is, is happening right now. And a lot of those fish they put in are bite size for a 5 plus pound largemouth bass, so they get fired up for that. Then you've got herring runs coming into a lot of these ponds, which are going to increase their activity even more. Um, so... And it doesn't mean you have to target them with big baits. You can do it with a whole bunch of different things. You can do it with jigs. You can do it with jerk baits. You can do it with anything you want, anything you like. I like to do it mostly with bigger baits. You get fewer bites, but I don't know. I just like that feeling of targeting bigger fish. Um, I was actually just got a text this morning from angler Mike Dixon out on the Cape. He said he had a really good swim bait bite this week. He showed me, he sent me three pictures. I'll put them up here. Um, solid largemouth, you know, fish in the at least pushing five pounds anyway, uh, all on glide baits and wake baits, he said. Um, he didn't tell me where he was fishing, but, you know, just looking at those baits, it really gets me thinking that there must be some herring running in some of those ponds out on the Cape, so that's definitely something to keep in mind. It's certainly something that I've got on my mind. Um, so we're hearing, good, we're hearing good reports from the Cape. Uh, I talked to my buddy Dave, who was out um, in a Massachusetts pond on Sunday. Uh, he was fishing mostly jigs and things like that, said he did very well, a lot of solid fish, had a fish, the biggest fish around four pounds, he said, um, and I've talked to quite a few other guys that have uh, had similar results anywhere from the Cape all the way out to the Rhode Island line, uh, really just in that like southeastern sector of Massachusetts, really seems to be pumping out some good fish right now. On the trout front, um, as we said in the intro, 23 ponds they stocked over the last two days, um, so, you, you know, and it was some, all the big ones got stocked. Little Pond, Long Pond, Peter's Pond, Hamlin Pond, um, all the stuff in, uh, in Nickerson, they all got stocked. Um, so, the trout fishing is firing on all cylinders right now, and, um, man, it just looks good in Massachusetts right now. Everything's, everything's looking really good. The freshwater fishing is really firing up. Um, have not heard any saltwater news this week, no holdover stripers or anything like that, um, but... It's only a matter of time. It's probably guys just keeping their mouth shut, honestly, because um, everything should be waking up right now. And uh, now's a great time to get it done.
to Rhode Island. Um, still hearing about really good cod fishing. In fact, it's gotten even a little bit better this week. Um, still have no news from the Francis fleet about when they are going to get their boat back in the water. I would definitely give them a call uh, first before you, you know, decide where you're going to go. Uh, you know, long, long time boat that gets it, that always gets it done. Just having some kind of technical issue right now that they're that they're chasing out. Uh, but I did see the Island Current went out again this week, at least once. Um, and they said that the that they're only catching codfish right now. They're having no bycatch. Um, and some of the fish have been really nice fish, you know, some of the some of these bigger, you know, fish that are up in the low 30 inch range. Um, so I know that they're planning to run a trip this weekend, but the weather looks a little meh. So you may wanna um, you may wanna check with them before you drive down there. But um fishing's been above average and continuing to get a little bit better it seems every week so if that's something that sounds like fun to you, you definitely should uh, hop on one of those point jude boats and get out there and get it done um other things on the saltwater front the holdover striped bass fishing has really turned around uh, over the last week i remember i think it was last week i was saying that it was just been off well it fired up this week and that tells me again that there's been some herring running up into some of these ponds and it's just getting these fish fired up now i don't have any photographic evidence of that i haven't seen it myself i just know from experience that when you've had a slow winter bite and then all of a sudden it just kick, clicks on it's almost always because some herring made it up into the pond even if it's just a you know small pot of scout fish it gets those bass fired up and uh, they they go from kind of just sitting in one place and you know being slow to react to anything you throw at them to wanting to chase down things like magic swimmers and sp minnows and hydro minnows and uh you guys get them on metal lips this time of year you can get them on glide baits like uh mike dixon was throwing for largemouth now uh, really anything that resembles a herring that's trying to get out of the way you know um will draw strikes and has a tendency to you know outfish other things um, in my experience so something that's moving a little bit faster has a little bigger profile um, tends to draw more strikes at this time of the year um, and these aren't all small fish either you know you're going to catch your 20 inch fish but the biggest one i heard of this week was 37 inches and um and there's bigger ones out there so uh, that's definitely something you guys can uh, get excited about on the freshwater front, of course, we know that all the trout ponds in Rhode Island are closed right now. So if you see that sign, don't even don't even go there. It's not worth it. Uh, but we have heard about some good largemouth fishing uh, along the south coast, um, and guys are getting some big pickerel in there as well. Um, could say the same thing again. Could be due to some herring running up into the ponds, or it could just be the time of year, you know, with these fish waking up and wanting to feed uh, pre-spawn. And the last thing is some really good white perch fishing in several landlocked ponds in Massachusetts. Uh, the best results I've been seeing are coming from Jeff Sullivan. He said it's been off the charts. Um, and white perch, despite their you know somewhat diminutive size, um, they're a lot of fun to catch. They're a cousin of the striped bass, and sometimes they school up and blitz like striped bass. I've seen it happen many times. Uh, they're very aggressive. You can get them on a lot of different things. I know he's been getting it done on jerk baits. Um, countdowns, the small like Rapala countdowns crush them, uh, hair jigs will crush them, uh, little soft plastic jigs, tip of the mealworm will crush them, they'll hit a lot of different stuff. Um, and he's saying, he's like, I think I can break the state record. In fact, he told me that's going to be his goal this week to try to break the Rhode Island state record, so uh, hopefully I'm not jinxing him here, but um, he said he got a lot of really solid fish um, doing that, and he's been having a blast, I can tell, because he's been doing it over and over and over again. So. Um, if that's something that sounds like fun to you, match up your tackle. You know, get a nice ultralight rod, go throw some small jerk baits, some small jigs, and uh, have a blast. It's a lot of fun. into Connecticut. Uh, one thing that eluded my detection uh, a couple weeks ago was the stocking of the Seaforel and brown trout. Uh, that was about three weeks ago that they did that. Somehow I missed the memo. Um, but guys have been catching them. Um, and you know these fish are mostly in the say four to six pound range. Um, if you don't know what a Seaforel and brown is, it's a German strain of brown trout that just 
they just get like extra muscular. They're like, you know, husky, uh, you know, just muscly brown trout and uh, very beautiful markings on them. You can see some shots here. These came from um, Andrew at Fishing Factory 3 up in Middletown. Um, but guys are doing really well on these this year. And, um, you know, this is the, these sizes that you're seeing here are like the typical size, but they always put in some giants. Um, I don't know what the biggest ones they're stocking this year is, but a few years ago, I remember they put some fish that exceeded 20 pounds in. Uh, so you really never know what you might catch out there. I mean, that would blow my mind, a 20 pound brown trout. Whew. Um, but I don't know if they put those in this year, but that's, uh, it's a, it's a possibility, you know, there's some root, they put some really big fish in every year. So that's one thing you guys can uh, get excited about. You can go on Deep's website and look up where they stock the Seaforellans um, and give it a shot. Like I said, they've been pretty aggressive. Uh, also, like we said in the intro, they stocked 30 something ponds over the last seven days. Um, again, you're going to have to hit the Deep website for that because I can't put 30 ponds on the screen. But um, these, you know, what stock trout are easy to catch you know they're not they're super aggressive they're not instinctual and um, I like to throw things that have bright colors on them I like to throw something that's like like a jerk bait with an orange belly or something that's got really flashy gold on it or something like that because they're very reactive um, and it's a great way to get kids involved in fishing and if you if you want my advice you know have them throw lures or have them throw bait without a bobber don't get them used to looking for the bobber to dip um, so that takes a little while to overcome for a lot of kids. If you really want your kid to get into fishing, um, you know, I had my daughter do it with jerk baits, and uh, a couple years ago when she first tried it, her first ever cast with a jerk bait, you know, she gave it a couple jerks. I went walking to see if we could find a place that had a little, you know, some higher trees so she could actually try to cast on her own. And before I could even make it 10 steps away, she was already bent over. She said, I got one. I'm like, no, you don't. And sure enough, she did. Um, so these, these fish, when they are first start, very aggressive great way to introduce kids to fishing and a uh, great way to introduce kids to lure fishing. So um, definitely take advantage of that. Up inside the Connecticut River, the white perch bite has been firing up in the marinas. It still really hasn't caught fire in Hamburg Cove though. Um, that should happen over the next couple of weeks, hopefully. Um, also some calico bass mixing in with those and we're hearing about some pike up in Haddam Meadows area. It uh, doesn't seem like a ton of guys are on that bite yet, but it is starting to materialize. Guys throwing big shiners, guys throwing you know, big husky jerks and bright colors like clown and fire tiger um, are the two most popular ways to get them. Guys will slow roll some big spinner baits and things like that to get them as well. Um, for more about what's going on in the Connecticut River Valley and surrounding areas, let's toss it over now to Rowan Lytle. Uh, we got some pretty classic March weather right now. March might be my least favorite fishing uh, season here in southern New England. Uh, it can be really, really sporadic weather, and that's kind of what we're getting. Now, it's, it's a little mild right now. Temperatures in the 40s throughout the week. Water temperatures are on the cold side. We had kind of some false starts. So some people were maybe anticipating early herring run activity. That's not going to happen in the Connecticut River, it, probably for another couple weeks at least. Um, holdover fishing's on the decent side, especially on the warmer days. There's not as many fish around as there have been some other years, but there's some decent bass in the mix. Um, right now, one of the good things to focus on is the panfish in the coves. They are starting to get on their sort of pre-warm-up activity, and they're schooled up relatively tightly, and they're on the feed. Um, very windy most days, so be careful if you're going out there in a, in a kayak. Remember to wear your PFD and dress warmly. Um, be careful out there, be safe, and uh, hopefully you can get on some good bites. Heading west from there, um, we did see, you know, more evidence of just better activity overall in the Housatonic River and some really nice fish. Um, some Definitely some fish busting 20 pounds. One uh, even bigger fish, got that shot here on the screen. Um, and these fish, from what I've been hearing, you know, I've talked to several guys that fish the Housie on the regular and they're not seeing any herring, not even in the small runs nearby or anything like that. So there's, it's not a herring-fueled fishery, but they're kind of acting like it is. You know, they're hitting, they're hitting SP minnows, they're hitting other swimming plugs, they're hitting mag darters. Uh, they're hitting some of the bigger baits jiggled on the bottom again. So um, something's changed, and these fish are firing up. It might just be the water temp, it might just be the runoff, or whatever it is. Um, the, the fishing in the Housatonic has gotten better again this week and should just keep getting better throughout the rest of this month. For more on that and some of the other things that are going on out in the western part of the state, let's 
Hand it over now to Max Finch from Fisherman's World. Hey everyone, Max here from Fisherman's World with another local fishing report. We're in March now, we're slowly creeping our way to April and all the stripers start coming back through and things will really start heating up. On the Housatonic, we've seen some nicer fish this past week on the moon. I've seen fish over 40 inches, mostly taken at night on, you know, your favorite soft plastic on a lead head. The fish will just keep getting more active, where everybody's anticipating the show up of the river herring. We're, we should see them, you know, shortly, maybe mid to late month. And then on the freshwater side of things, the trout fishing still is really strong and uh, the state should, you know, remain stocking our local rivers. So Saugatuck still fishing well and the Mill River and Fairfield's fishing good and Mianus. I haven't heard anything on the Nauk River yet for stocking, but I'll let you know when I hear. And then down to our west, we've heard some fish starting to get real active, you know, way back up in Raritan. So that's always a good sign. Thanks and good luck. And to wrap up the fishing reports, let's take a short flight now down to Marina Pez Vela and uh, get a little... Little dip, little taste of the action of what's going on down in Costa Rica. Hey there, guys, how's it going? This is Ben Gilmore from down here in Costa Rica and the Marina Pez Vela. We've had some really nice fishing going on this past couple of weeks. Just two days ago, we raised three blue marlin, fish between 200 and 250 pounds, fish of a lifetime stuff for sure for our anglers. There's been some big yellowfin shooter out there, quite a few fish over the 130. 150 pound mark this last couple of weeks plenty of fish in the 30 to 50 pound range as well the dorado is still pushing there's been a few dorado showing along with sailfish also during our offshore trips in by the river mouths we've had some really nice snappers we've had some snook and the rooster fish bite at the rocks and the beaches has been nice as well the weather's down here is great right now march and april are great times to visit blue skies and calm seas there's always great fishing here in Costa Rica, and we'd love to see you guys down here soon. Back to you. For more than 20 years, anglers everywhere have come to know one thing, that nothing says no to fish bites. And that's what I have for you guys in the reports this week. Hopefully you're going to find them useful, and hopefully they're going to inspire you to get out there and do some fishing. This is the first week where I really feel like there's a lot of things going on that it kind of give you no excuse not to go. You got really good largemouth fishing out on the Cape, inspired or fueled by some herring and fueled by some trout stockings. Um, something I forgot to mention in the Connecticut report too is that, you know, there is no closed season in Connecticut anymore. So we've got an open trout season right now in Connecticut. The only thing is you got to release all the fish. And as we've talked about the last couple weeks, that opens up the opportunity to fish for largemouth in these stocked ponds that you haven't been able to fish in March for as long as any of us can remember. Uh, so that's very exciting. Don't forget about the giveaway. Don't forget to hit us up at RISA this weekend either. That's at the Rhode Island Convention Center in Providence. It's going to run from Friday the 10th to Sunday the 12th. I'll be there all three days. We've got awesome giveaways. We'll be renewing subscriptions. And we've got that promo with Yozuri where you can get free Yozuri gear from us just for buying three lures from one of the uh, selected dealers. So we'll see you guys there. And uh, last, and last but not least, head over to our website, thefisherman.com. If you're not a subscriber, just check us out, see what you think. You know, it's 30 bucks for a year. You get 12 paper issues sent to your mailbox. You get 26 digital issues sent to your email box every week during the fishing season from April to mid-November. It's the best 30 bucks you can spend in fishing. I appreciate you guys for watching, and we'll see you next week.